T. Well, hey guys. We're back. Hello world. This is a familiar place to us now. We 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 were here last year. It's becoming an annual tradition. And so, as people come into the stream, if you're just joining us, we you didn't miss anything. We just started. So, welcome. I'm going to be keeping my eye on comments as we go. We've got some other people that are going to be keeping eyes on comments, so hopefully things go quick on Facebook, but uh, hopefully we can we can catch everything as we go here. But, most excitingly, this isn't about me. It's not even about this guy, but right now it's about this guy. Matthias, Hags from Yert. Hello. You welcome guys, to uh, the internet. Welcome to the internet. We're here now. We've made it to the internet again. Again. I didn't know, you know, that this was going to become a recurring thing with you and I, but... It's fun. I it, like it. it is good, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, um, all right, guys. Good to see everybody here. And I guess there's uh, no time like the present to really get talking about what we're really talking about here. So, what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about recent 9.5, of course. Ta-da! I should have a little soundboard I can cue yeah, right? Up. Just ah. the VST fanfare. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fanfare. That's good. Yeah. And you all know what it's about. It's about so the VST plugins in Reason. That's the headline. That's the headline. That's the feature. That's the feature. So tell us a little bit about it, Matthias. I mean, I think anyone who saw the announcement video probably knows what's going on. But maybe you didn't see the announcement video. Maybe you're ju just getting this now. Um, why don't you tell us this is a, an update. We're, we're doing an update to Reason. Take it from there. Yeah. Uh, so really, yeah, free update to Reason 9.5 for Reason 9 users. And really, why we're doing this is we wanted to not limit people in what they use. We saw so many so many users asking us about this, tons of you guys out there asking us about this. And it's also, it's kind of the time for us. It fits really well with what we're doing. And there's happened so much in the plugin world, really with so many amazing companies and stuff. And things have gotten a lot better too during the year. So right. it really felt like it's time that we do this. I, I think that's a, a fair, yeah. Why not? Yeah. So why I, I want. <laughs> why not? <laughs> How come no one recommended that before? <laughs> yeah, never, never heard about it. <laughs> so I mean, it's safe to say it was it was probably the biggest feature request we've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It was. I think maybe behind audio recording back in the day, but still a huge. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So so some people that might be newer to Reason, uh, Reason was originally conceived of as a rack of instruments. Uh, it's an a, an inst a set unto itself. Yeah, exactly. A fixed set, a fixed community of, of instruments and yeah. effects. Yeah, a long time ago that was the case. And the evolution of reason has been that we open it up. You know, we, we continue to open it up as, I guess maybe this is the, the philosophical heart of the, the, the people like you yeah. that d make these decisions. It expands and opens up to help people make music when it's, when it doesn't harm what is great about right, reason. Exactly. And it's, it's also kind of a trend, right? Because we did the same with uh, Ableton Link just recently. It was a typical example of a technology that we think worked extremely well and allowed people to do more great music, in that, in that case, together with each other. I see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to just do a little housekeeping here. I'm watching the comments as they come through. And hi from Nashville and hi from Chicago. I've seen a couple of people checking in with their city. And I have seen a couple of the very classic people going, there's no sound. The sound, there's a, it's a Facebook thing. There's a little icon for the speaker. And uh, if you're not hearing sound, it's because you got to turn it on. I love this. I love so. that you're telling the people who can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I did this last yeah, year. It's a classic. <laughs> That's right. I, you know, and I had a whole year. I should have learned the sign language for, you yeah, know, right? <laughs> there is no you know, click the icon. Well, anyway. Okay. Well, look, we could, we could waffle on uh, for a while, but I think really what people want to see is VSTs in action. That's and maybe and maybe it's fair to say not just VSTs in action because running VSTs is obviously it's groundbreaking inside reason but it's it's not what is groundbreaking about it in reason it's the way that it's being done right yeah absolutely and so maybe before we start throwing stuff in let's just talk us for a second about the philosophy there and and you have a unique position on that because you were you are reason's product manager you helped guide this right right yeah so so really uh, the decision kind of, when the decision was made, there was a lot of other decisions, right? How do we do this? How do we figure it out? How do we implement it? How do we make it work like we want it to work? And the reason workflow is one of the biggest reasons, no pun intended, why people really love using this program. 
So when we started doing implementation, we thought, okay, what can we actually bring into that? What parts of reason can we kind of wrangle into how you use VSTs? Right. You know, actually, for people out there watching, I hope you don't mind, Matthias. Swedes, okay. Swedes aren't one to brag, but <laughs> I actually want to play a clip. When I was, I put together the announcement video, and when I was going through the announcement video, um, and I, I did an interview with Ernst, our CEO, and he said something that it didn't apply to the announcement video, but he gave you some credit that I thought was a, a nice, just a nice little, you know, recognition that I think maybe the the rest of the Reason community should know, they should know the name Matthias <laughs> and what he has brought to Reason. Check out uh, what Ernst says about uh, the timing of VST and the, and the driver behind it. Matthias came on as, as Reason product manager um, not too long ago. And it wasn't, you know, and we had all these discussions about, that sort of restarted a discussion about what we we're going to do with the application in the future. And uh, I think it was actually sort of the spark of doing what we're doing exactly right now comes from him. There you go. I, I <laughs> can't say thank you enough. <laughs> so uh, anyway, well, look, let's, uh, let's get down to uh, business here. Yeah. And uh, let's start checking out. Some stuff. What do you got? You Obviously, you've got Reason for us. I've got Reason 9.5. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, so a quick heads up, as it's always nice to say this, we're still in beta, right? Yes. Things can happen. I don't think they will. We're in a pretty good state, but just so you know, this is still the beta. We're right. not quite done yet. I think that's our way of saying, knock on wood, that, uh, yeah, pretty that everything runs smoothly. <laughs> and if it doesn't, uh, don't blame us yet. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but I've been running this for a while, actually, and it's really fun. It's yeah. really fun to start kind of mixing and matching stuff. So let me show you the basics. Let yeah, me show let's, you let's what do we've that. done. Well, actually, should we, should we take one step? Let's, let's start with a couple of very basic block questions. Like, for example, some people have been asking, will it run, will it run all my VSTs or will it run just the ones we saw in the video? Or, or are, right, we, right. are we enabling specific VSTs in Reason or what? Mm. Oh, this is just an implementation of VST, of VST 2.4. So really, the goal is that every VST 2.4 plugin that works as it should, should work in Reason 2. It's a full VST implementation in, in pretty much every respect. There's a couple of things that we haven't done, and we'll probably get to those in the questions. But really, if you have some instruments and effects installed, VST 2.4, they just show up in Reason when you start 9.5. It's the same. It's the same process as launching any other VST host DAW, yeah. right? You know, they just it scan for, on first launch scans your VSTs. Yep. Goes, oh, here's what you've got, and now those are. I mean, they're where they're. Are we can you show people sort of how that what that looks like? I can actually looking at your screen. I can see a couple of VSTs living alongside a couple right. of rack extensions. Right. Yeah, exactly. So. Really, when you've scanned all your VSTs, Reason knows that they're there. And if you're on a computer where you have your VSTs in a special folder or something, you can set that up and you can scan it from there. So no biggie. And once they're in, they're represented here in the rack. This is an example where I actually haven't done anything with this plugin yet. So that's what it would look like when you first yep. load a, or you first, it's the first time it scans and finds a VST, it's exactly. going gonna to look like that. Yeah, so this is the freshly loaded Dune 2 by Synapse Audio. Uh, it's an instrument, so of course it lives in the recent browser under Instruments. You'll find it together with all your other installed rack extensions, your VSTs, and of course... And you can see, so as devices. you're scanning that, you can see there's a certain, uh, some visual delineation there between a VST and a rack extension. For example, in that the rack extension is uh, the more... It's just fully integrated in the sense that even visually there in the browser, whereas the VST has that little, was that little badge? Yeah, on exactly. It. Just so you can tell them apart. That little corner badge that says VST. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, and using and loading these VSTs is really close to how you would do it with any reason instrument. So if I want to create this Dune 2, simply drag it into the rack. It automatically creates itself. It hooks up to a mix channel and it's kind of ready to play if I want to. Don't have to do much more than that, right? That is uh, now that is to any reason user. That is the the workflow that we already know. We're not exactly. there's no new learning curve. There's no no new sort of workflow yep. to it. You just exactly. in, okay. So the big difference really is that this uh, plugin rack device. Sure, it's there in the rack, but VSTs have their own interfaces. So there is a window to open, and it's quite simple. You just click this VST plugin window, and it pops up. Here we go. One thing you might have noticed is if you look in my browser, have Serum down here, for example, and it has a really nice icon. 
This is something we're really happy to do, actually. It's not quite common, but you can take a screenshot of your plugin. So it appears in the browser and in the rack, and you really know what's what. Okay. So let me show you real quick how to do that. Up in the toolbar in the VST window, there's a tiny screenshot button. So you just click this, and now you can see here. So what was what was blank is now has a, a thumbnail. Exactly. So okay. You, you know, it's easier to find your VCs in your browser just scrolling and you see, oh, I know how this looks. I know what this is. Right. You know. Now, I'm going to take a pause here a second because a couple of the comments coming in are, even though we kind of said like, you know, it, it's we're not limiting it to one to VSTs that we have anointed. Right. The questions are still coming in, going, well, w but what about machine? Will machine work? Yeah, we've tried machine. It works really well. And east west, will, will east west work? I'm pretty sure. I haven't right. tried it personally, but most things work. So what you should know is that one thing that doesn't work, just to be completely honest, is VST MIDI plugins that send MIDI out. Okay. And that's uh, you know it's version one. It's the first time we're doing this, and we need to start somewhere. And we thought instruments and effects, that's really the really important right. thing. So VST 2.4 instrument, instruments and effects, which is the, the vast majority, it's easy Absolutely. to say. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So there, so uh, would virus, would the access virus work uh, is the next one's coming in? Complete, you know, will complete work. The, so the, the answer is, it's kind of a blanket answer that is, y yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it VST 2.4, an audio effect or a, a, a instrument? Yep. Yes. Yep. It should work. And as right. always, it's, it's always tricky with these kind of things because there's thousands and thousands of VSTs out there. And doing, you know, testing of every single function of every single plugin would take a long time. And that's where we're counting on your help, too. So the beta that's running now and once it's released, just try everything you can. And everything we find, we'll, of course, try to fix if there's something wrong. Right. We have really good compatibility right now. Yeah, okay. So for, so for the people out there, I'm, I'm going to kind of give a an overall answer because i'm seeing the questions again will waves audio work you know we could probably go down we could spend the whole hour just fielding yeah, just listing names yeah will this one work <laughs> yep will this one work yeah you know um so so i'm just going to put out the blanket answer yes <laughs> um they they work we're you know uad you know all this stuff like we're 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 testing them beta testers are testing them and and the word we're getting back is that the implementation is working and these things work in yep. reason and we're gonna well, let's play with them let's, yeah maybe it's me, best to show it exactly you'll see me use quite a few in this demo so i think you'll get part of the answer there at least right all yeah. right so uh, like i said you can open the window and this is where it kind of differs quite a bit from Reason's instruments and rack extensions. VST developers have their own interfaces, they've created them and they open in a separate window. And for a Reason user, that you're not used to that, I must admit. It took me a while to kind of get into it. To the floating window. And yeah, the... to just kind of, you know, get into using another pop-up window when you want to tweak your synth and stuff. Right. If you're coming over from another DAW, this is a workflow that you're entirely used exactly. to. Exactly. In fact, you're almost, it's the adjustment is more getting used to the immersive rack in Reason. Yep. So, but let's just do some basic stuff here. I'm gonna just load some some patches to see what works. I'm just gonna try some bases, maybe. You know, I'm gonna take a quick moment here to point out uh, one thing for people. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's worth notice, uh, noting. Facebook, wah wah, it's mono. It's mono. So look, in the grand scheme of things, that's fine because we're not talking necessarily about the sound so much as we're talking about the opportunities and the technology. Yep. But if you're expecting these massive Haas effect, you know, ping pong exactly. delays. Um, well, we should have been on Twitch then. Yep. <laughs> next <laughs> but, time. Uh, next time. <laughs> okay. And it's a bit too bad with this synthesizer because it's a huge stereo synth. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, there'll be a few I'll of find those. something good. Just get some patch going. It's nice. I'm just going to maybe back off on the reverb a tiny bit. Actually, I'll take it away. Okay. So that's kind of how you work with, you know, any VST you go into uh, into the plugin, set something up, change some parameters. It's worth noting that a lot of VST plugins have different ways of loading patches. So there is a standard way for the VST format. And that's, uh, you know, that's FXP and FXB, it's called. We support that in Reason. So if you have those in your browser, you can find them, you can drag them into the rack, you can see them in the patch browser. But then there are tons of plugins that have their own solution. Okay. And in those cases, you do the patch browsing inside the plugin. So a bit to get used to as a recent user, but I think you'll quickly get it. Okay, yeah. I mean, 
you know, Reason users are familiar with patch formats. We have the, the is it repatch, dot repatch? Is yep, a, exactly. A, or dot CMB combinator patches. I mean, the, you know, we have our own set of, of Reason patch formats. FXP is the... It, yep, FXP and FXB. FXP and FXB. Or preset. Right, okay. So it's just a, a, new, a, a new little acronym to learn there. Exactly. Yay. Um, like you kind of expect, of course, this works like anything would in Reason when you want to record it. So if I want to record some MIDI here, there's nothing different, really. It's like I would record anything in Reason. So if I quickly open up the sequencer, let's say I want to do a short bass line here, just for show. It's as simple as setting up the track, hitting record, and recording. Oh, I'm in the wrong part of the song. <laughs> there we go. And there it is. Right. So nothing strange, right? Right. It's almost, you know, so this, this is, uh, it, the, the funny thing to me is that it's such a monumental change, yet nothing's really changing. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, I, and that's, and in a, in a good way, right? Like uh, the workflow that you know as a Reason user, the, the, the quickness of the sequencer, the way that you get yep. in and do what you need to do, that's all there. It's just now you're using Dune. Exactly. And uh, that actually reminds me. Let me show you just how it's hooked up. Of course, the VSTs have their audio outputs and audio inputs, and they're presented in Reason just like they are with native devices. So you can see my audio out from Dune coming into Mix Channel. So, of course, you can just, you know, route this to a spider, split it up, you know, add some effects on one channel and do everything you're used to doing in Reason's modular environment but right. with VSTs. Right, okay. And that's a really important point, I think, because that workflow allows people to do some amazing stuff. Right. I mean, there's, uh, you know, the, the workflow of VSTs often is, is sort of done. If, if I could speak in sort of reason parlance, mm -hmm. um, it would be more akin to what you'd be used to in a, uh, the inserts of a channel right. where it's a, it's a series. It's just things run in a series. You go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, and what's great about reason is that you can do that if you want, but you also have this not nonlinear, I don't know what you call it, but this freeform yeah. routing where things don't have to be in series. They can be in parallel. You can split things off and you can route something this way and something exactly. also that way and then you can create separate signal chains yeah. and et cetera. And it's so, also the whole thing of, of seeing the cables and dragging them. That gives you a way of working that a lot of people love, me included. Sure. Um, just to give you another idea of what's in here, there's more inputs and outputs. So each VC can have up to eight audio inputs and up to 16 audio outputs. So you can easily take something, let's say a drum machine with separate outputs, uh, maybe contact with separate outputs, and send those to different tracks. Again, just using the routing in Reason. Right. That's great. Well, um, let's... Let's do something else. Let's do some things. Um, I'm, I'm going to just actually try to build a song. I think the best way to show all this is to kind of use them normally. Okay. To actually do something. Okay. Um, well, while we're doing, I think what we're about to do is to to use uh, some BST. We're going to use all classes of Reason devices, native devices. Yep, uh, all kinds of stuff. Rack extensions, etc. cetera. Uh, Johnny Christensen asks a question, which mm -hmm. maybe is a, a fair question to ask, but but one which we should answer. He says, does this mean that rack extensions will slowly die out? No, To which not at all. I say, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> of course one not. thing I can say personally, because I've been using this for a long time now while we've been developing I actually found myself using a bit more, using some more rack extensions. I'm yeah, you know, actually, appreciating the unique devices. I'm appreciating using them together. Right. You know, it, it kind of opens up the whole mentality that Reason has three things now. They have the actual native devices that come with Reason, the rack extensions that work extremely well in the Reason rack, and the VSTs. And the mixing and matching, that's where really the fun begins, I think. Right. And actually, that's just in my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not, when it comes to my own personal use of reason, I'm not a, the CV wizard. I wish I were, wish I were better. I'm learning, as like everybody is always learning. But what I've noticed is that the enticement of being able to modularly patch and control a VSD plugin via CV has made me go, oh, I want to do, what, what's that about? I want to do that. I want to try that. And it's actually gotten me into a lot of the rack extensions that I didn't use in my own uh, music making a lot of these CB utilities that do you know step sequencing and and uh, sort of arpeggiator stuff. Right, right. A lot of that stuff is, has 
actually opened up to me through the enticement of because I'm doing it to something that you can't do that to anywhere else, right? Right, right. Yeah, I understand completely. So no, so so the the answer then is that rack extensions ain't going nowhere, and no. we uh we've been uh, pushing that technology further, and yeah, we'll continue yeah. to push that technology. And we have a lot of you know ideas and thoughts about where rack extensions will go, and I think the more you use them, the more you realize the strength in both formats, and we try to you know figure those out more where we go and make rack extensions a great format that works in its own way and works extremely well. So I think you'll find that you'll use both, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's do a little using both. Yeah. Um, classic thing. I'm going to set up uh, maybe a drum loop. So I'm just going to use a VSC drum machine just because I can. This is also one of the examples. Let's take the multi version. This is one of the examples where you can use multiple outputs. So Microtonic by Sonic Charge has a bunch of outputs. And you can see here they're active. So they're lit up and green. Ah, okay. This means Microtonic is mapping all the drum sounds to different channels. And normally the kick is on one, and you get some snares and hi-hats on the two and the three. So if I were to hook this up in Reason, I can just do a couple of mix channels, you know, and then route it to where I want. I can do separate processing, maybe add a polarizer on the kick, maybe do some EQing on the snare and so on. So let's just see uh, really quickly how we've mapped this up. Let's maybe choose another pattern. Here, for example, you can see that you have the two toms coming out of two different channels, while the kick is coming out of one. Oh, I see. So down, you're looking at, uh, if you could zoom in first, Matthias, we're yeah. looking at the actual, uh, the meters there. You can actually see the different exactly. drums hitting different. So here's just the kick. It's one of the toms. And here's the other one. Okay. It's kind of a, it's a really flexible way to do that in Reason because now if I want to kind of take this and process them individually, I can start adding all kinds of effects to the different channels. With with, with drums, that's something that people commonly want to do when they come Absolutely, to mixing. Yeah. They, they don't want to necessarily compress their kick the same way they compress their toms. Or exactly, their, yeah. exactly. I'm going to be lazy though, so I'm just going to use the basic version that comes out in stereo and Fair see enough. if this works with my song. Well, maybe a different pattern. Better. That's nice. So a typical. Oh, now that's, that's well, we're hearing that now with your Dune. Yeah, with my Dune bassline. Oh, ah, look at you. Before. Yeah, right. Mr. Like Beatmaker. I prepared. <laughs> 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 so just to show how easily this works with you know normal recent devices, I'm just gonna add some polarizer to the drums. So you, you know, you simply find the thing you want, drag it after the VST, add some squash and dirt. There you go. It's really that simple. It hooks up automatically like anything else in Reason. We've got a, a question. I wonder if um, it's now's as good a time as any to, sh to show it. So uh, Bo Veninga, Veninga, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Bo Veninga asks, w uh, can you control Z within the VSTs? Uh, yes, most of the times is the answer. Okay. So, so really, uh, how this works is that VSTs tell the host, Reason, a bunch of things. They tell them when they change something, they tell them when something is changed, and so on. And if that's all done correctly, then yes, we've actually implemented proper undo, control C. So let's say I'm gonna change the distortion here on this bass drum, and then I'm gonna quickly hit... Do that again, I wasn't okay, on Distortion. Okay. And change it down. And then I change it back to where I was before you started looking. Oop. So you're just hitting control Z or command Z. Yeah, exactly, I can do the same here. And then just command Z. Right. So in most VST plugins, that works really well, actually. Yeah. And uh, most others, if they don't support that, if they have done something special with the parameters that we didn't catch, I've tried it. I actually haven't gotten this to fail once yet, but if you run into that, then most VST plugins have their own undo system. Right. Okay. But which is worth saying, if I if I may brag for us a little yeah. bit. Yeah, go for it. There are some VST hosts, and this is something that happens to me, if I ever am using another DAW... I'll go into a, a VST and I'll be tweaking something and doing this and that. And then I'm, it, because I'm a Reason user, it is so instinctive to have multiple undo and just have it there on the quick key. And I'll hit Command-Z and the next thing that happens is the VST window goes away because the last thing that the host is aware of was that I created the VST. It's not right, aware of right. all the things that I've been doing. And there may be it, no other sadness in my life greater than <laughs> losing all of that. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, absolutely. It can be a big problem. So we really tried to solve that, and it's worked. It's worked right. super well, and you can try it out. Right. Adam Fielding actually says the undo support is the best I've seen in a VST host so thank far. You, so Adam. thank you, Adam. Um, he said it was one of his worries about VST, VST support. But Ours too, and that's why we spent some time on this. Yeah, right. Right. I think it's safe to say, I mean, I, I've said it earlier in the broadcast, but it's worth saying over and over again, really, is that the implementation that you guys, and I say you guys as the engineers that, that really pulls off and the product managers, right, the, heroes the brains the hero behind the, the operation, um, the, the driving force has been that we make music and reason in a special way, and we don't want to change the way that we work and make music. We don't have to adapt to the things we don't like about right. what harms the music making process. Yeah, you know. yeah we really try to you know, compromise as little as possible. That's the goal. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, add something else, maybe? Yeah, let's add something else. So let me show you uh, just how well this works with something like players. So I'm going to open up mm. Serum, which is a great synth from X4 Records. Just open this up and load some good patch. I might reprise my favorite from uh, this, the introduction video. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh, long delay. <laughs> might actually that take is a long down delay. the feedback a bit. <laughs> It'll uh, be a two-hour stream as we wait for the... Uh, yeah, exactly. We can really make a long stream just by turning up the feedback. Uh, let me show you just how easy it is to work with players with this. So... I've done this bass line in the drum loop, and it's kind of okay, but I want to get something down that's more chordy, that's more kind of moving around. So I'm going to use the dual arpeggio. And just like any other recent instruments, you just drag it on top. And, you know, you load a patch, maybe. I, I actually quite like the default arpeggio patch. I think that's because you made it, right? <laughs> yeah. <you got> me. <laughs> <laughs> so using this, I can just play my keyboard like I would. And it plays my VST. Right. Still quite a long delay. It is quite a long delay. <laughs> While that delay rings out, I've got time to ask a question. Yeah. Um, so Deval Groove Sharif asks, mm -hmm. the uh, the VSTs, so th maybe there's some terminology here to clear up too, because in his question, you, you'll understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. He says, so the VSTs are loaded into a combinator, so you can do the same thing with VSTs that you do with a combinator, right? And they're not loaded into a combinator. No. They're actually loaded into a plug-in instrument. It's an instrument. Yep. It's uh, and so w the answer is that no, they can be put into a combinator, which exactly. is you can't put a combinator in a combinator, but you can put a VST plug-in instrument into a combinator. Yep, and this is actually a really good opportunity to show that. So let me just record something real quick because I, I like making music while we're demoing. I think it's good to have something going. Yeah, I'm just gonna record this serum patch. So let's go. So we got it going. Uh, let me add a rack extension too, because this desperately needs some sidechain compression. And I quite like the one called Pump, a oh. really good sidechain effect. It just automatically sidechains uh, your signal. So if I solo this, you can hear what I'm talking about. And that's kind of a nice patch, actually. So mm. if I want to save that, I can simply choose all these instruments, players, VSTs, rack extensions, and combine. So now, okay, right. So now this is again, you know, the, the hopefully the light bulbs are are ticking off yeah. for the reason users. <laughs> We're going, oh, oh yeah, oh. yeah. So you now have a combinator that is housing, uh, what was a native device? Am I correct in that? Yeah, it was a player. A so player, right, yeah. okay. So you've got a player, you've got a plugin, you've got a rack extension. All now housed in a in a patch savable combinator can be yep. saved, traded with a friend, loaded right. into another song. And you can also use the programmer here to actually set targets for the VST. So you can set, you know, the pan octave semi whatever you want from the VST is accessible from the combinator. Mm. So you can set up these rotaries and buttons to control both VSTs, rack extensions, native native devices, and make your you know your dream synth patch and. Pass it on. So it, it's really flexible that way. Right. Now, now in the comments, there's a little bit of, um, 
I don't uh, maybe uh, suspicion uh-huh. about about these these VSTs mm. and but they're, and they're asking things like yeah but when you load a Reason song that uses VSTs does it launch and load the patches that were last used. Yeah, absolutely. So we saved the state of the VST, the state the VST was in when you close the song. When you load it up, we load it back up. Okay. So as long as you have the same VST version installed and that's supported, then yeah, right, we'll make it happen. You know what, what's what's funny to me is that a lot of I think what we see in our in our user community, we see a lot of excitement, enormous excitement. Yeah. And so we see that off the bat, but underneath that excitement, you then also see people going, "Wait, but." Is that is that gonna? How does that work? And how does that work? That can go. And so, in some sense, like it was the same way when people were going. But will Slate plugins work? Yeah, you know, right. um, the the way the answer to a lot of these things is like, yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, you know? yeah. take it easy. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, um, a question. This is a a, a technical question uh, that is worth, I guess, mentioning. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question from um, Kevin Fay or Fay is uh, VSTs in Rewire. Ah, then I'm sad to say that no. In rewire mode, VSTs won't work in Reason. They're using similar resources to put it in non-development terms. Okay, I'm not a developer. That's, that still sounds like development. Terms. I know, right? <laughs> but <laughs> but no, and much much like you know our friends at Ableton, they also don't do VSTs in rewire. That is kind of standard, right? So it's not a it's not a unique no, uh, no. limitation, I guess you could say, of our implementation. It's just exactly the the commonality between the technologies is something that that isn't the case yeah and one thing i've heard from a lot of you guys when i've you know sent out went out on on the street i was about to say <laughs> went out you know and uh, visit people in stores at super booth and so on the reason a lot of people are using rewire is to access their plugins their VSTs. sure so they're right here now at least right they, yeah <laughs> so so they yes exactly so that's the that's the full answer there uh there was another uh question that i guess while we're talking about yep. some of the uh you know under the hood mm-hmm. technology um, some people are asking about sort of sandboxing and crash protection right, right. and these sort of things. Yep. Um, I know within the within the Reason community during the the time the VSTs were not in Reason, mm. there were people that were advocates for the stability of Reason and and protective of that. It was almost right. a territorial of thing. Course, Don't you course. bring those VSTs into my, you know? <laughs> Don't let them in. Yeah, you know, and there there was there's there's yeah, a faction absolutely. of people that feel that way. And so maybe we could talk about uh, the sandboxing, if you will. Maybe that's too. Too broad a term, too but a the, the crash protection that uh, exists, right, right, and also I'm going to throw two at you at the same time. Mm. Um, the notion of VSTs stability as it affects reason at its core, right. So, so really, there there are two answers to the question, right? If you don't use VSTs, reason hasn't changed. So, if there's no VST to be loaded, no VST in the browser, no VST loaded, then it's going to be as stable as it were. One thing. Uh, when you do load them, it is the case that it's another program running its own code, doing the stuff they want to do, asking us things, sending messages back and forth. And that can cause errors. It can, you know, they missed this thing or we did something differently. But we've built a crash protection system that is, you know, it's not perfect sandboxing like, you know, more in the rack extension world. But we've taken part of that technology and put it into the VST implementation to make sure that if some crashes occur, some kind of crashes, things we've identified or certain ways a plugin can crash, we try to catch them. When we catch them, we disable the plugin and reason is intact. Right. We do that with quite a few errors that can happen. Right. So in many ways, a lot of your plugins can be really stable. And even if they're unstable, it's, you know, it's not a big problem. We're doing our best to, to, exactly. to keep it yeah. at bay. <laughs> and one yeah. thing that's worth noting too is that during the years, I think one of the advantages of doing VSD 2.4 now it's not a new technology, and people have really had their time. A lot of developers have gotten a really big, really very successful product, and they worked hard. They worked yeah. hard on fixing tons and tons of stuff. So I think in general, if you compare to, you know, five to seven years ago, maybe, the VSD world is more stable. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and to that first point, to, to hammer that home as mm-hmm. well, you know, if you are not running VSTs, the stability of reason, there's nothing that changes in the stability of reason. In fact, Ernst, actually, when I was talking to Ernst about this, he said, uh, you know, if we if we hadn't announced it, it might have taken some time for people to even realize that. Right. <laughs> you know, it, 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 the, the actual, um, the experience, the stability, the the reliability of reason that you know and love uh, is is all the same 
certainly with before you get even get into the protections we're putting into when you're running BSTs. When yeah. you're not running BSTs, nothing's different. Yep, exactly. Uh, all right. So uh, let's uh, look at something really cool. Let's... This is the one I've been looking forward to the most, I, I must admit. Uh, so one thing we've done, I'm going to show this with an effect that's very, very clear what I'm showing. So I'm going to go and grab uh, a filter. Sounds basic, right? I'm going to grab a Fab Filter Volcano 2, which is a really nice filter. Quite simple. You can add the four filters, do some stuff. But this part <laughs> is really exciting. <laughs> This is what I'm all about. This, yes, exactly. So, you, as you know, Reason has CV connections. The tiny yellow cables that sometimes appear in your combinator patches, and you may or may not know why. <laughs> they're, they're the best. This means that you can control stuff with, you know, exciting things. Or unexciting things, if that's your bag. So, let me just show you how easy that is. So, you have a CV input. Actually, you have eight of them at the back. Here you can connect any CV signal. So I'm just going to use the built-in LFO pulsar and hook that up to modulation one. So this is now running. I'm going to set it to something a bit more fun, maybe. Those that dabble in CV, even myself, know that that much. I, I'm I'm quick to reach for pulsar because yeah. it yep it works it yeah. works well. Then you can simply choose a parameter and assign it. So I'm going to assign this to the filter one frequency because I'm just going to use one filter. You can see what's going on already. Yeah. We're now controlling this filter frequency with the pulsar. And so that, and that's the, that's a ran, you set it to a random waveform. So yep. that's what, why we're watching it kind of jump around. Jump around all so 30 if, I, if I set it to maybe something more normal, like a sine wave. There we go. Oh, that, I see. Right. That's okay. a very fast sine wave. That is a fast sine wave. So that's if you slowed it down. Slow sound, sine wave. There we go. Right. Okay. So let's just listen real quick. You can hear the filter going up and down, even if it's a VSD. And you can set the amount, how much modulation, maybe just a little bit, or all oh, of it, okay. right? Or you can set the base value, and this is, where does it start? Where is this parameter, right? Uh -huh, Aha, okay. What did I set it to? So you can say, for example, if you have a low base value, you can see it's modulating down here all the way down to the yeah i got you exactly so it's similar to you know what you said it what you set the controller to really it just reads what you set the controller to this would be i mean if we if we think about the uh, phys the physical world of turning a knob exactly this is you turning the knob all the way yep counterclockwise all the way to the bottom exactly and okay. if you if you take a look at the screen we actually this base value you can set it in the programmer but that's boring so if you just change the frequency Stops modulating and lets you set it to whatever you want. You can see the base value changing while the control. Now, do changing. that for a second because people need to put their eyes two places at once. If you yep. if you guys are watching, you're gonna see the the little resonance peak that says number one inside a fab filter. That's moving, but you're also gonna see the knob moving. That he's uh, you know Matthias yep, is moving filter turning. frequency one. But if you look down into the uh, the rack device, you'll see the base value moving as well. So you've got all that stuff moving, and what Matthias is able to do then is he's defining the base value within the plugin exactly and it's communicating it back to the rack device yep. and when i drop it there we go it's really i mean this is a basic example this is a filter that you're modulating up and down maybe not the most exciting thing in the world but there's some really really cool stuff you can do especially when you get into the more advanced cv things that we have in the rack mm. there's stuff like arpeggiators and sequencers and stuff that you can hook up right so again just a super quick example of how this works. So let's load up, uh, well, let's take a serum again. It has served me well. And let's take maybe a base patch. I can use recent utility kind of CV devices and sequencers like the Matrix. And of course, these automatically hook up to mm. the gate note input and you're ready to go. So I can just do some classic, oh, I chose a patch that didn't have any attack. <laughs> You can do your classic matrix sequencing. It's a challenge to quickly do a, a matrix sequence that sounds really good, but I'm going to do my very best. A bit acidy, at least. Uh, a bit, a bit. And you can easily do this, you know, with anything. And there's tons of rack extensions. 
that do this extremely well. That do some really cool sequencing and arpeggiation and that kind. They've of sort stuff. of taken, you know, the Matrix is a is a Reason 1.0 device. Yep. And they these these rack extension developers have taken the the, the concepts of pattern sequencing and CB control to entirely new levels. Yeah. W- Way, way, way more than I thought they would. <laughs> You're right, exactly, right, right, to a great degree. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's it's sometimes it's hard to talk about this. I realize because it just kind of works, right? You know? Right. You, well, you, one you, thing you run out of features, <laughs> <laughs> right? But I have a lot of stuff to show. So one thing that I really like is you know what happens at the top of the VST window here. Mm, okay. So this is good to know. So we've we've talked about the screenshot button yep. there. That and and for people that maybe are late joining us here, that screenshot button will actually sort of save a thumbnail inside the the rack device so that you can quickly identify exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. But you have some more stuff here. So right. some people might be asking, how do I automate my VSTs? How do I do it? And that's what this is for. Mm-hmm. An automate button. You click it and you click the parameter you want to automate. And down here. We created a track. Just for like always. Filter one cutoff. And you can draw in a curve. Just like always. Beautiful, right. Beautiful curve. This is one the, of my best. This is another one. It's like, it just, yeah, it just works like it yeah. does. It just works the exactly. way you and, think it should. And another way to do that for, you know, people who don't like clicking and opening the windows, you can always use the automation drop down. Right. Like you can do in any rack extension. <laughs> right. Yeah. See it again. It's like, yeah, you know, just yeah, like just, the way you, like the works. way you think it would. Right. <laughs> right. But um okay, so that is that's the automate button. You know, there's a button off to the left of that that uh, maybe we could show that too just to explain it. Absolutely. So the keep open. There's a nice nice pin. I love the pin. It just sounds friendly. <laughs> if you click this, you can make sure that even if you select your reason window, that will just stay on top. Floats on top at all times. Yeah. So if you want to do some settings over here in the mixer, or maybe you want to add some more stuff to the rack, you can keep the window open. Right. You can also choose not to keep it open. Right. And, you know, it starts disappearing when you open more windows. If you click on another rack device or another track, another mix channel, you know, exactly. these, these things, it, exactly. it can go away. Yeah. Um, uh, this, oh, shoot. His name went away. Someone, Aguilar, said that automation is what he loves about reason. So um, good news for you, my good friend. Good news for you, exactly. <laughs> um, all right. There's a, a question from um, Michael Valin. Uh, he says, "Curious if VSTI presets are managed in the Reason browser in some way. Uh, it'd be nice if it had some sort of unified method to browse presets. Mm. I think it's similar to what we've covered. Is that right? Right. Exactly. So if you have FXBs and FXPs, those do work. Those." appear in the browser, load the right thing, and you can see here on my screen. Yeah, let's take a look at that. If you have a plugin like this Kilohertz one, they use that system uh, for most of their plugins. And when they do, you can use the recent browser here. Just choose what you want, just like you would any recent. And that would be true of also the, the left side browser. Exactly. You can find it there. And it says VST program here. That means it supports that and uses that. Uh, if it doesn't use that, we try to get the patch name from whatever they're using for browsing and just show that to you instead. Right. Okay. Cool. You know, now Tom Jarvis asks, uh, because we, we showed three out of four of the buttons in that VST window. I mean, I suppose we should talk about the fourth one. The, the He says, what about the... It actually uses a lot of exclamation points. What about the remote button? It works. Just the same <laughs> as automation. Remote and click and assign it to something on your mini controller. There you and go. That's it. The end. <laughs> this is again. This is the weird part. Right. It, it, it's, it's almost like you know. It's like a, a a game of stump the band. Do people know stump the band from bars? You know, you get a, a cover band, right? And people throw yeah. out things, and the band's always got it, right? It, a little bit of this is like stump the band, where it's like, D- but does it do this? It's like, gotcha. Well, yeah. what about this? What about yeah? It's, it does it like it that. Works. There you are. Assigned and controlling the uh, the cutoff from the modulation wheel. Yep. As you would expect. <laughs> exactly. We really, we really tried hard to make things feel reasony. It's, it's really... It That's a nice happen, way of right? saying it. Yeah, it's, you know, people are used to working in certain ways. And I think every threshold to kind of, not the ones where you challenge yourself musically maybe, but every time it just gets annoying, mm. that's hard. Mm. That's hard. And we try to get those things out of the way as much as we can. Right. Now, a follow-up on the uh, on the patch question here. Aaron Marston says, well, what about custom patches you've made perhaps in another host? Uh, if it uses the FXP or FXB system, that works. That just works. And uh, if you have um, VSTs that have their own patch format, 
of course, those patches work with the VST's own browser. Right? Okay. So even if we couldn't reach. So this is something, maybe this is something, I, now something. I'm, I'm, I, I've been a Reason user exclusively right. for so long that I'm like, I have to kind of refresh my memory on VSTs, and maybe this wasn't even a thing when I kind of, you know, left them 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, the, you're saying that some browse or some, some plugins use their own proprietary patch format and therefore implement their own browser and therefore um, you have to go through the plugin to access them. Exactly. And it's one of those things uh, why we did rec extensions, right? Because in the VST world, a lot of people spend a lot of time developing similar stuff. Stuff like copy protection, browser, file formats, undo history, stuff like that. With rec extensions, we take care of that. But that's not always the case mm. in VST land. Contact is a typical example, which I have on the screen now. It uses its own system because, I mean, it's a very advanced, huge sampler where you can load any kind of instrument, has their own devices and so on. So they couldn't really use the standard patch format. Sound good, though. <laughs> that does, what is that? That's a really nice Celeste from yeah. Contact's factory library. Yeah, sounds good. Mm. Mm. I'm ready for <laughs> warm milk and a nap. Yep. So in this case, for example, you can see, yeah, we show that it's this patch, but since it's not VST programs as defined, you can't change it from that interface. I understand. Okay, right, right. Now, uh, you know, we're not one uh, to speculate, and I don't think we're going to really start now, but <laughs> the question did come in uh, about VST3, uh -huh. and they say, are you going to support that later on? Ah, later on questions. They're hard. The later on questions are hard. They're really hard. Yeah. But the blanket answer, I mean, this also, I mean, why don't we, why don't we just throw out, I mean, well, well, this is like an AMA in this sense, yeah. you know, AU, you know, are you going to support AU? Are you going to support you? Right. There's a lot of, are you gonna, are you gonna? Right. And, um, and, and really the best answer I can give is, do you want it? And if so, tell us, because mm. we constantly have to make decisions about what to focus on, what to do, what to develop, what to spend time on. You know, so this is version one of VST supporting reason. We chose the most common format where the most plugins are available. The most mature. The most mature. And that's where we start. And we'll see what happens in the future. Right. You know. And when it comes to things like audio units, you know, so, I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of those things where um, part of the the core driving sort of principles of reason also is cross platform compatibility. Yeah, that's a really big reason and for that. And AU is just that, it's a non starter. Yeah. We, we, try to really never do platform specific stuff. It's not how we want it to work. We want things to work, you know, Windows, Mac when possible. So that was also one of the reasons we went with VST. Right. Now, Daniel Ripley's got a question. He said something, actually, I haven't tried. Maybe you've tried it. Maybe you can answer. Uh, and maybe if not, maybe someone in the uh, beta tester might be watching the stream. They can answer. They say, can I place a VST on a second monitor and save its position? Oh, so you mean you have two screens, you change the VST window to that, and when you open it again, you want it. Will it be over? It. The same way that if I put the right. mixer on my second monitor. I actually haven't tried. I haven't tried it either. Maybe um, hmm, Maybe we can do a super quick experiment. Oh, can we? How do you, you don't have another monitor. No, but I do have different positions here, at least. Oh, so, I see what you're saying. You could just put it... Does it save right, window position? Exactly. So let's do this. All right. Close it down, and let's do this. Okay, so it saves window position. So it saves window position there. So then the fact of the matter is there's nothing different about having two monitors. I don't just, think so, no. That's I, just I can't different say coordinates. For sure. and, and it's something I'll have to try now because you brought it up. It's I know. Really <laughs> Probably well, people have tried this in the beta too. So Right. So yeah, so if people in the beta maybe want to chime in in the comments and stuff. And, and actually, you know, it's worth saying everybody can try this on May 29th. That's uh, when Reason 9.5 comes out. It's a free update for Reason 9 users. Yep, and also Reason Essentials 9.5 for Reason Essentials 9 users. Ah. Easy to forget. Ah. But that also gets VST support and is released the same day. Right. If I can make a little a little pitch for Reason Essentials in a sense, you've often said that Reason Essentials is just such an amazing, you know, with rack extensions too, right? What a great way to get into oh, to yeah. rack extensions, yeah. you know, a sort of low bar of entry to get into these this world of third-party stuff. Right, right. And it's still unlimited audio tracks and, you know, unlimited instruments. So all that stuff is there. It's just a selection of what comes with the program. So right. I think for a lot of people, that might be their first, you know, first VST host. Something yeah. to try out, try out some freeware stuff, you know. It's a great product.
Right, right. He said, banging himself on the chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt. I've got a, a paragraph here. Question. I'm gonna attempt to read it to you. Um, we'll see how this goes because I'm gonna be reading it for the first time in front of you. Can you automate? This is from Sarah Lily Men- Mencuso. She asks, uh, can you automate changes to a parameter while it's still being CB modulated? When you were dragging it around in the BSD interface, it stopped the CB modulation until you were done moving it. That makes sense to you? Uh, oh, okay, okay, right. So if you have modulation in the sequencer and CB controlling it, I guess one maybe of them the question cancel out the other. Right. The question is, what takes priority? What's the hierarchy of mm, of mm, control? Right. I guess uh, one way to try is to try. Let's let's find out. Let's do that filter again because it becomes very very clear. Right. That actually, that's I a good way happens. to just really tell what's going on there. So. Let's do that. Do, 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 do. And let's create a track for it and create some automation. Gonna do filter one frequency. So here, down here, gonna draw in some automation like this. Excellent. Uh, and then I'm gonna hook up. I have up to say, CD. you draw a pretty good triangle wave. <laughs> I do my best. Uh, and then I'm gonna hook up a vastly different LFO to CV1 and assign that to the same parameter. This is exciting. I've never done this. Oh. It's really exciting. Thank you, Sarah. Do-do-do. And we're going to play this back. Maybe only listen to this track. And maybe up the rate a bit. Hmm. It seems in this version, the automation does take priority. The automation, the sequencer automation takes priority over the, over the rack Exactly. Con- CB control. If I were to delete that lane, you'd get the Yeah, CD. okay. There's so the answer. That's how it works right now. Yep. I've, I've never tried this, actually. So we'll see how it ends up being after beta. Uh-huh. Like I said, this is still beta. I right. Don't, I don't really know. Right. But uh, that's how it works right now. Okay. And you can check it out again on release. All right. There you go. Um, so uh, some people are asking some questions about, uh, you know, kind of standard stuff in, in the the host world, which mm-hmm. is CPU overhead, um, and and how Reason and VSTs handles the the CPU overhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, the question specifically from Matt Boardman is: How much CPU overhead will there be when loading a VST instance in addition to the actual VST itself? That's a, a question I think I can't actually answer. Mm. It's it's slightly too technical for me, so I, I'd have to double check. You know exactly how we handle that. Okay. Because, you know, we have the settings in Reason where you can set the CPU usage limit. Uh, and I can't answer just right away how that affects VSTs. Right, okay. Sure. Um, some uh, questions about uh, things like Ozone as well, um, as uh, effects and sort of these big mastering mm-hmm. uh, things. Those, uh, I know we've, we've sort of done this blanket thing, say, so yeah, yeah, they work. But it's worth saying Ozone because Ozone being uh, such a fantastic mastering suite. Yep. Yeah, it works. I, I have it right here. You have it running right lo- now? Load it up. Oh, I see. Let's take my track here and... Uh, sorry, Default Mastering Suite. Oh. I know. <laughs> I, I love you, but it's time to maybe try something else. And I'll just go down here to Isotope in my Now, browser. people who people know Ozone, the Ozone Maximizer as a rack extension. Exactly. And this is Ozone 7, the complete thing. And I'll just open it up and maybe... I think maybe take a preset. I'm lazy with this kind of stuff. So maybe electronic clarity, and it's just mastering my song. Yep. Nothing strange there. No, no. And then you can see again, you know, we're talking about this as a very just seamless, obvious workflow. It's worth mentioning again that there you've got the Ozone uh, plugin running within the insert Chain, which is right, sort of exactly. a combinator the, the of sorts, inserts, you know. Yeah, the master inserts. Yeah, it lives where the mastering. It lives where you think they would. would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, a uh, question from Todd Lemons. He w- he's asking, I believe, about uh, plugin delay compensation. Right. And maybe it's worth talking about that. Uh, and then you know, what? I'll I'll tee you up, and then I'll get you his question because it's a follow up. Mm-hmm. So yes, the other feature I, I sometimes forget there's two features in nine point five <laughs> is plugin delay compensation. Uh, it of course doesn't only work for VSTs. Well, it that's actually for... that's really his oh, question. That's his question. His question is, is you know, yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> you, beat, you beat him and me to it. He says, does plugin delay compensation also further optimize rack extension performance, or is it relegated to VSTs? 
Uh, I wouldn't call it performance, but yes, it handles latency. That's what it does. So if you put a bunch of heavy rack extensions that maybe uses some oversampling or things that delays the sound, plug-in delay compensation will take care of that. It basically just adds the same delay to all other channels without you having to do anything. So in recent, it's really just a button on my screen. It's way at the bottom here. And it's on or off. Right. That's it. So right now you can see it's on and we have 236 samples of latency. And that's just getting added to all tracks. So nothing's out of phase. Nothing sounds weird. Right. And that works for our internal devices, for rack extensions, for VSTs. The only consideration there is, of course, the plugin has to report their numbers correctly. Ah, okay. Sometimes, you know, someone can miss that. It happens. But we get the numbers from them. As long as we we've got good information, exactly. then we, we handle it. Yep, we calculate it and it's done. Okay. You know, I wonder, actually, uh, there was a question that came through the, uh, and it, it made me realize, could we take a look at the mixer? Because this is another one of those, like, it's just as you would expect. But he said, what, are the, what do the VST instruments look like in the mixer? Right. And the answer is, they look like mix channels. They're just there. There's the stuff we've been making. Big yeah. square bass, that is... Uh, Oh, actually, wait. Big square bass is that one of our? Which ones? I, I, it's <laughs> See, funny, it's hard, right? <laughs> I, I can't even. I'm trying to look at it to tell which ones are VSTs and which ones are rack extensions, and I can't. So, big square bass is Dune Two. Ah, okay. SC Syntec is from uh, Microtonic, and the best combinator. <laughs> oh, that was you. You made. didn't even see me name that. Uh, no, I didn't see you name it. Okay, yeah, so you. That's the best combinator. Okay, right. Which is filled with VSTs. Technically, rack actually, extensions. this one's the best combinator. Ah, that's true. Let, let's be nice. <laughs> I can't live with myself if I don't fix that. There we go. <laughs> thank you. The OCD sufferers amongst us, the thank you as well. Yep. So they work just as well. And as always, you can you know use these buttons right here to just quickly go to the rack. You said, what is big square base? I just click it. And right. Say, oh, okay. Right. Too. Right. As you would expect. As you would I expect. mean, we're going to keep drumming, hitting That's the drum theme. of like, it's just <laughs> like you think. But but I think that's cool. I mean, it's worth it's worth hitting that drum because... That is what you guys, and it's a it's a, a credit to you and the entire Reason team. And I'd like to, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wow. give my own you know applause to you guys because as a Reason user, you you've added so much to potential possibility. Mm. But I'm still able to act and function as a Reason user. It's not right. a learning curve that I'm gonna have, you know. So yeah. as a music maker, and I, I hope I'm I'm clapping on behalf of other people as well. <laughs> Thank you guys. So, well, we uh, we got a couple more questions coming in, but I mean, yeah. I think we're we're probably towards our wrapping it up uh, phase here. We're coming up on an hour, which uh, it's been lovely spending the hour with you guys. Yep. But um, the oh, okay. So there's a question. Todd Lemons had a question. This one I think we mentioned earlier, but we'll we'll toss it out there. He asked, "Will there be support for MIDI BSTs such as uh, Cthulhu by X for Records, right. uh, etc.?" Yeah. So not in this version, no. We've decided to focus, really, so we got this as good as we possibly can and focus on instruments and effects. So no support for VST MIDIs in the first version. Okay. Yep. As a guy who's not a, uh, a VST guy, personally, mm -hmm. my understanding is that if you were looking at a pie chart, that's not exactly the the, the bulk of your... Right, no, no, that's that's not the, the biggest area for VSTs, really. They were developed as a, an effect format and an instrument format. That was mm -hmm. the first first thing, so... That's really where it shines, I think, too. Right. Yeah. Right, okay. But as you saw, they, they work really great with players still, so you'll get some of that, uh, you know, kind of thinking with the players. Mm, mm. Okay. Well, um, while, we're, while we're wrapping up here with you guys, if you have any other last questions, now's your chance. Well, not now's your chance. You can ask us, tweet us at any time at Propellerhead Software or, uh, or talk to us, you know, online on Facebook or, or really anywhere. But... Throw in your questions now if you want. We'll take them live as we're wrapping up here. But maybe, Matthias, you can tell us, for the people joining the stream late, Reason, give us the bullet points. It's coming out when? It costs how much? What is happening? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so Reason 9.5 coming out end of this, this month, May 29th. And 9.5 will be a free upgrade for every user of Reason 9 or Reason Essentials 9. Otherwise, it's a paid upgrade for 129, I think, euros or dollars. That's if you're coming from, from like reason, reason one through eight. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So I hope a lot of all the reason two and three customers are joining. Yeah. It would but, be really fun. Right, right. Just but get I, back into it. Abs absolutely. I mean, you know, this is this is a thing. So 
you know, there there probably does exist, we'll say a Reason 8 user, right? Yeah. Reason 7 user, maybe, that um, has, you know, because they have wanted access to Serum, for example, mm-hmm. or Massive, for example, or you name, you know, one of these things that was not in Reason or available via a, a rack extension, um, they have been working in another host. Right. And what we have seen is people, those people, we have seen sort of, a homecoming, if you will. Yeah, right? it's, it's been really fun actually to follow the YouTube comments and the Facebook comments and seeing all these people getting so excited and you know going, oh wow, I have to get back into this now. I have to oh release it. Right, right, you know? exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so that uh, May 29th, There you go. Yep. You know, welcome home <laughs> <laughs> to those people. Uh, Reason nine guys, you guys are going to get. It's going to be a push notification, right? You're just yep. going to yep. if Auto you boot update. Reason on May 29th, it's just going to say a new version's available and you just hit and install. You just grab it. That's Could, it. That couldn't be easier. Yeah. Worth mentioning that uh, we're running the beta right now, and you can still apply for the beta if you have uh, a Reason 9 license. So. Now, th- there's been a couple of uh, questions about mm-hmm. beta access. You know, this is a it, it's a public beta, but it's uh, may, perhaps it's I assume it's just to handle the the inflow of yeah. of, of of reports and and user experience. So it's it's not just a hey grab the beta here and right right exactly. The people are being we're opening it up to people as we go. Yep. And that is going to be continuing up until May 29th, right? Yep. Yeah, and we, we really, primarily we want to be able to handle all the cool stuff you're testing. You know, We want to be able to look at the cases and we want it to kind of work well. But if we open it to everyone at once, I think it would be quite hard to check all those emails, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> right. So if you haven't gotten your beta invite yet, it's There's not lost time. in the mail. It's yep. not never coming. It's just, you know. Yeah. We're, we're adding people. We release new versions maybe once, twice a week, sometimes even more when we fix bugs. And when we do that, we try to let on more people. Right. So once you sign up, you get in the queue. And and now here, I, 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 could, I could perhaps give some homework to those people awaiting their invite, Right. You guys, I would say you have an opportunity in time to find a friend who might be using a a, a non reason host and uh, maybe maybe show them reason maybe maybe show them the ropes and uh, get them into the workflow that you know and love and then say and yeah hey bring your stuff with you you know yeah and send songs back and forth yeah oh hey mm. <laughs> the possibilities possibilities well listen guys we've had a lot of fun with you guys uh as always we love doing these streams and i yeah. think i i have to say you know i've done ones at home as well uh, you know back in san francisco i, I enjoy doing it with you matthias so so thanks Thank for you. i enjoy doing them with you thanks too. for hanging with me ah oh, uh, re- really how the life at the office is we just sit in a room and talk like this all the time <laughs> except you're not here totally and matthias has technology <laughs> hanging down in yeah, front of his face. microphone yeah just total <laughs> average day at the office but uh also thanks to you guys i mean thank all of you for for hanging out i don't even know the numbers of how many people have been here but there's been a gazillion people uh, commenting and liking and all that stuff. So I've been I've been having fun watching all those go by. I hope we answered your questions. I hope we got you as excited as we are. And uh, I guess that's th- there's nothing left to say except uh, go team go. We'll uh, we'll see everybody on May 29th in Reason 9.5. Right? Yep. Say goodbye, Matthias. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye.